Snickers, the iconic Snicker bar. I'm not a big fan of chocolate bars, but actually not too bad. It kind of makes, it makes sense. This is the first time, I'm not, I'm not shitting, this is the first time I've actually tried Snickers. I just know the flavors, how it's gonna taste. I'm just not a big fan of peanuts, chocolate, and caramel, everything is too sweet. I wanna recreate this dessert in my own way, finesse it, sexiest way possible, and kind of pimping it up into a dessert that is mine. So, we're gonna make a Snickers tart. And to make that tart, it's gonna be a coffee tart shell filled in with a hazelnut and peanut praline, filled in with a peanut butter diplomat cream, and then topped it off with a roasted milk chocolate ganache. Now this recipe is actually in my upcoming book, which is a little secret, well I'm telling you guys anyway. This is gonna be part of my book, and I want you guys to see it because I love this tart. That's kind of a lie, I've actually never tried this tart. I made it, and I gave it away, gave it to my friends, gave it to my chefs, and they loved it. So I'm curious, I wanna see what it tastes like. I wanna, I wanna try my own creation. And this is gonna be the first time me making this tart again and tasting it. So my book is coming out later this year, so keep an eye out for that. And there's gonna be little snippets of recipes I'm gonna give away that are part of my book. Not everything, because you need to get it. Let's get started. To make this recipe, we're gonna make this tart dough. I've got some plain flour in there, unsalted butter, and of course, Gotta add a little pinch of salt. Just a little bit. And to make this kind of tart dough a little bit unique and different, I've got some ground coffee here. You can use some freeze-dried coffee as well, which is instant coffee. I'm gonna add that in. There's coffee, hazelnut, and caramel. Amazing. Bit of sugar in there as well. And we're gonna work this until the dough becomes a sandy texture. Make sure the butter is cold so that it doesn't melt too quickly and kind of melt and incorporate into the butter too much. You don't want to work the flour. Because when you work the flour too much, it kind of shrinks into the tart shell. All right, you can see this, it looks like sand, okay? Nice sandy texture. And at this point, I'm gonna add in our egg. Now it's forming to a little rough dough, just a little bit, making sure you get the bottom. You, wanna, you don't wanna work it too much. And you can smell the coffee ever so slightly. Done, okay, that, oh. So that's your tart dough. Now I'm gonna gently work it into a bowl. You don't wanna knead it like bread. I'm not pushing any, I'm not putting any pressure at all. All I want to do is just clump everything together and get into a little rough shape. Tart dough, done. Wrap it up and then into the fridge at least for 30 minutes, but better overnight or at least one to two hours. Oh shit. Okay, and next for the filling, we're gonna create the Diplomat Cream, peanut butter Diplomat Cream. I've got smooth peanut butter with a little pinch of salt in this one. Of course, you've seen my Moss video, I hope you have, and if you haven't, you better watch. Got some milk, we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. Slightly whisky eggs. So there's two egg yolks in there. And it's gonna be this peanutty kind of texture that, you know, I can't, I, I don't know how to make a nougat like this, so, the way I'm gonna make it is like a thick Diplomat cream and using the peanutty flavor with the peanut butter. Whiskey, whiskey with some sugar. And later we'll add our corn flour. In this, you can add some flavors like vanilla, some other spices if you want. That's kind of driving away a bit too far from the stick bar. So just whisk it enough until it's pale and then we're gonna stir this corn flour in. So I got my milk simmering. Take that off the heat. And all we're gonna do here is whisk it in, slowly and gently, into our egg yolks. Making sure you get everything, everything dissolved. Then this goes back, back into the pot.
back on the heat, medium high. And we're gonna keep whisking this. Don't stop, keep your eye on it. Keep whisking this until it thickens up. All that starch will start to swell up and activate. You get this really nice smooth custard. You can start to see the middle is becoming to thicken up. Look at that, all the air bubbles going away. Bam, look at that. Now you can use this on its own with a bit of orange zest, some vanilla beans, and then finish it off with some butter. But we're not there yet. Now to make the peanut butter flavor. I'm gonna add in about 85 grams worth of peanut butter. This one's actually quite runny. <laughs> I need water. And we'll whisk it now into the crumb pot. Now whisk it in. You get that nice, thick peanut butter custard. Add some salt, okay? Mmm, that's it. That's what I want. Now at this stage, I want to put it into a container and let it cool down. This is gonna set real, real solid. The next part of our component is our praline mixture. This is a mixture of peanuts. They've been toasted with some hazelnuts as well, lightly salted. And in here, I've got sugar. I'm gonna make a dry caramel out of this and we're gonna create a nut praline. Let it set. I'm gonna blitz the shit out of it until it becomes a really nice paste and delicious. All right, my caramel is looking good enough because that's gonna keep cooking and get really dark. Now at that point, bam, add your nuts in. Toast them bad boys. So make sure you stir it around. Get that nice and epic, woo! That's gonna go out onto a tray. Spread your nuts. Once that's done and spread, just let it set outside or into the fridge for to speed things up and then we're gonna blitz it up. All right, time for some precision work. Make sure you've got yourself a ruler, a silicon mat. I've got a perforated one. Okay, you don't have to get that one, but it's okay. Knife, spatula, and here are the two kind of different tart rings you'll find. There are ones with a base on it, but these ones are the best ones to use. Preferably not this one, Better if you've got a perforated tart ring. It makes blind baking a lot easier and you won't get those uneven puffs and rising in the tart. So these are expensive, but they're really good. So that's what we're gonna use today. So I've got some dough that's already been rested with the coffee. I'm gonna roll out a big chunk. We're gonna lightly flour the surface of the board. Lightly flour your tart dough. Okay. Just so that when it kind of comes up to temperature, it won't be stuck. And we've got our rolling pin. And all we're gonna do is just gently work the dough. Not too much to the point where it starts to crack like this. You wanna make sure you go as nicely as you can. Just gonna go for about like two to three millimeters thin. Now just check, making sure that it doesn't get stuck on the board, which mine already has. Just release it. Do a quick flip. All right. Now at this point, I want to quickly rub my ring with butter. Get that nice and lathered. And then I'm gonna use my ruler next and cut out a strip from the dough. So once I've got the strip of the tart, I'm gonna work my way around it just ever so slightly. And what do you know? It doesn't go all the way around. If yours is a bit too short, this is what you'll need. Just grab another piece, pop it on like that. Oh no, stick, 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 stick. 
Okay, this is fail, hold on. I'm gonna gently press the dough into the tart, making sure it's nice and even, even the ones that have overlaid on top of each other. I'm gonna keep working that as well. Now at this point, I'm gonna pop that onto the tray and I've got a larger ring cutter that I'll cut out. You can use this again, just don't work it too much. But here you go, a larger ring cutter and that's gonna be the base. It's basically two pieces of the tart here and I wanna kinda join it together. But first, what I wanna do is kinda use my thumb and work my way around and my finger as well. Work my way around, pressing on the edges and the sides, then grabbing a little bit of water, just a little bit, and all we're gonna do is just dampen the edges and try to seal that. Now, I'm gonna grab our knife. Cut the edges, the excess right off. You can see how thin that is. Break some holes. Then here, I've made a little blind baking device with some grains. So best to use some baking paper and you can fill this up with other grains too. Same with the baking paper. Uh, baking beads, anal beads, and any other little heavy stuff you have, even rice. This into the oven at 170 degrees for 30 minutes, 15 minutes to blind bake, and then 15 minutes to kind of cook the rest all the way through. Now we're gonna make the next component and that is the roasted milk chocolate ganache. Now this here is what roasted milk chocolate looks, oh, looks, looks like. Oh, fucking hell. This here is roasted milk chocolate and we're gonna make a ganache out of it. Because in Snickers, it's coated in milk chocolate, but we want to take it up a level further. And this is how it's going to take us to that level. It's like my Moss video where I roasted white chocolate as well. This does similar things to it as well. Just makes it better. Got some cream and milk in here. Bring it up to a boil. Once the milk and cream has come up to a simmer like this, off with the heat, and then in, it goes with the chocolate. Now it is super, super important to blend this nicely because when you blend it halfway through, you get little, see that? That's hard to dissolve. Those are crystallized sugars. You wanna melt that through. Now, since this ganache has some milk into it, I've got some gelatin here. I'm gonna pop in. And this gelatin is going to give us that elasticity and flexibility of what you'll see later on to make this ganache look real sexy. Into a container it goes for a few hours or overnight and then into a piping bag. All right, ladies and gents, now for the praline paste. Break that up. Oh. More bad. And close it up. I'm gonna blend this till it's nice and smooth. Just gently first. Mmm, not done yet. But look at it, it's getting all powdery. Now nuts have a lot of fat. We wanna release those from the nuts. Ooh. Oh, that's all done. Okay. Now you can see it's kind of become a, a thick paste. I want to blend it a little bit more until more oils release. Just another 30 seconds will do. And I promise you this will be one of the most tastiest things because it's not just like a smooth peanut butter. It's kind of crunchy. You get little bits of caramel that kind of crunch in your mouth. Okay, now. You can really see the difference. Even without having to touch a spatula with it, it's starting to kind of move like lava. And you can see, kind of go like this. Nice, right? Look at that. All right, into the bowl this goes. So I've got this here, little, that's the peanut butter creme with the creme pat. And it's very, very set because the fat content in the peanut butter is very high. So, and everything is just kind of like gelatinized. And here I've got some thickened cream. I'm gonna whip it up to a medium or soft peak. Not too much, I'm gonna add this in. Mm. 
And what we're trying to do here is incorporate everything into the cream and making sure that it's nice and emulsified together. So we're gonna break up that gelatinous kind of mix and make it nice and fluffy. Uh, I'm really happy with that. There's some little bits of peanuts in there actually. It's not really a smooth peanut butter, but good texture. Take a look at that, that's nice, smooth, and shiny. And this is gonna go into the second layer of our tart. So I've got this really nice creamy peanut butter diplomat cream in a piping bag. And remember that ganache we're talking about? This one here has been setting for a few hours. Now what I wanna do is kind of work the ganache until it becomes nice and smooth again. And in this piping bag, I've got this kind of nozzle, which is a unique one. It gives like little pedal patterns to it. So this is the tart shell now, and it's nice and shiny. And what I've done is actually, I've double baked it. Uh, I brushed a bit of egg yolk onto it once it was cooled down, shaved out the sides, make it nice and smooth, and then brushed it with egg yolk, popped it in for another five minutes, and this is what you get. If you're gonna put in some mousse fillings in there, it's really important to get some chocolate, whether it's dark or white, and coat the inside. Just be very gentle with this. And once you've got the inside nice and coated, pop this into the fridge to kind of set everything and get all the other ingredients ready. All right, now it's time to plate up. Now I've got the tart shell nice and set. And here, the first layer we're gonna put in is this nice nut praline. We're only gonna fill it a very small layer of it, one millimeter thin, on the base. That's gonna be a nice little caramel nutty surprise. Next up, delicious peanut butter diplomat. This is gonna be our creamy component, kind of light. And lastly, I'm gonna add in the ganache, and this is where the fun comes in. I tried this last time and it just turned out really, really shit. Here we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Look at that. That is stunning. That's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, I can't find any cocoa powder. That's what you're supposed to put on, on top, but I found some gold instead. So, ooh, damn. Completely unnecessary, but absolutely Whatever. And now here I've got some nuts. I'm just gonna pop a few here, here, so here. Alrighty guys, that's it. That is my Snickers tart. Where's the Snickers? That is my Snickers tart from this chocolate bar to this epic looking beauty. Check that out. Oh, look at those layers, huh? You can see the layer of that little thin, oozy praline. Then you got that nice diplomat cream. The ganache that goes all the way to the top. I'm gonna cut it one more time. Then have a little sample. That's a perfect tie. Look how thin that is. Oh yeah. Mm. 
Not bad. Mm -hmm. That is good, okay? It's a nice chocolate, a nutty chocolate tart. All right, gangsters, let me know down in the comments below what other dessert I should make inspired by a chocolate snack or a confectionery, and I'll turn it to a nice, epic dessert. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.